Welcome, everyone. My name is Phil Anthony. With me today is uh, Daniel Janicek. Um, I am the uh, digital code specialist for ICC. Uh, Dan is the uh, the manager for the uh, ICC digital codes uh, premium product. And today, what we'll do is we'll go through uh, some of the new enhancements that we made. Um, there will be opportunities to ask questions. Uh, also, uh, at the end, uh, actually post them in chat. You are able to do that, and um, after Dan's gone through so and so, showing some of these features, um, I'll be able to go through and answer those questions. And um, for those of you that are already using digital codes, you may have noticed that there is a few changes that happened today, all great enhancements that, while may be new, uh, actually I think will make things a lot more intuitive and easier to use. And I do want to mention this, uh, as I said, you know, uh, Dan takes really good care of this product here, and it all comes from user feedback, people that I've talked to. And as you're using Digital Codes Premium, you see over here on the right-hand side, there is a feedback button. I am pulling that up to let you know that we definitely do pay attention to this, and we do want to hear from users how it's being used in, in their everyday responsibilities and tasks they're trying to do and any comments for improvements or anything else that you see, please use that whenever you're uh, in digital codes, if you have responses to, um, uh, to make to us. And as you can see from what we're gonna show today, we do listen to those and we make those improvements and continue to do so. Uh, as a matter of fact, with Premium Complete, I think in just short 18 months, uh, we had like 400 titles in there before. We are now up to over 1,400 and probably over 1,500 uh, by the end of the uh, the year here. All the new 2024 I codes are being released, plus along with other content as well, too. So I will now turn the presentation over to you, Daniel. And um, as mentioned, Please post comments in the chat. I'll monitor those and interrupt if needed. If not, we'll circle back and answer all the questions at the end of the presentations. All right, sounds great. And thanks very much, Phil. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, just kind of building on what Phil had said there is the best ideas do come from the users. So whether it's enhancements, ideas, or even criticisms, hey, this application is great, but you know what it's missing. We wanna hear that feedback. Um, so again, leverage that feedback tab, reach out to Phil, reach out to myself, um, but that is what allows us to continue to better understand our customers' needs and build those enhancements into the system itself. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. And what I am going to be doing is walking the group through uh, some of the changes that we have introduced here to our Digital Codes Premium platform. Eagle Eyes viewers will note that I am doing this demo from our staging environment. Um, that is solely because I had set up some personas to be able to show different access tiers. Everything that we're going to be seeing here in this demo is available in our production environment, meaning when you sign into digital codes at codes.iccsafe.org, you are going to see all of these features, all of these screens as it relates to your user account. All right, and uh, one other disclaimer as I start this off, um, I am a very large Marvel fan. Uh, so you will notice some of the personas that I'm signing in with uh, will reflect that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sign in here as an end user. And the first test account I'd created is in honor of the latest Guardians of the Galaxy movie, Star-Lord himself, Peter Quill. And this is an account that I've registered yesterday as a trial user. So signing in with this email, username and password, the user's going to be directed to the My Library page. Now, existing users will be familiar with this as the default page that you see upon sign-in, uh, but what we've done is enhance this to provide a lot more contextual information to make it easier for the user to recognize what tier of access they have and what features are available to them as a result. As a trial user here, the first thing you will notice is a very prominent opportunity to see how much time is remaining on your 14-day, no-obligation free trial. Um, and that is going to be available at the premium complete, which is our highest level of access. Um, so this block here gives you that, that countdown. Uh, accompanying this is an, a series of emails to keep the user engaged and aware of the features available as that 14 day period continues to extend. And with these changes is a promotional offer for those that are inside the trial experience to get 15% below list price for premium complete if they convert to uh, a paid subscription within that 14-day window. Uh, and all that's going to be available here uh, from a single click. 
uh, where you can see it's part of the premium complete. This will be available throughout the duration of that 14 day window. Um, but once that trial does end, uh, so it is the promotion. So a nice feature there. As the user scrolls down, uh, one of the big things you will see is the descriptor here identifying uh, the type of account that the user is consuming. So this is being spotlight as a premium trial. Um, and that'll be important as we jump through some of the different personas. You'll notice how that messaging starts to change. Um, but the biggest importance there is whether you have premium singles, premium collections, premium complete, or in this case, premium trial, your type of subscription will control the titles and the features across which you have access. So Digital Codes is trying to make that clearer to make sure the user is taking full advantage of what is available to them. And along those lines are these six prominent blocks here for the tools, content, and support opportunities to ensure the customers are understanding how to utilize the application and taking full advantage of it. Um, I'll come back to these top three in just a moment, but I wanted to spotlight the resources and support. Um, newly here is our onboarding video series, which was crafted. Uh, these are all available through YouTube, uh, but it's a series of five short videos, which will spotlight some of the key features of digital codes. Um, each of these is about five minutes or less, um, so it's not a massive time investment, uh, but it is going to be well worthwhile for you and your staff to make sure that you do understand how the content is formulated, how search is performed, how to navigate across the contents, as well as powerful tools like bookmarking, tagging, and notes. Additionally, the Quick Start Guide provides a plethora of information around how to utilize the information. Um, this is constantly expanding as we introduce new features, um, new enhancements. And then the last one here is these webinars, which we host on a monthly basis. As Phil alluded to at the start here, all of our webinars are recorded. So even if you're unable to attend one of these live, you can always visit our webinars page and be able to stream or get caught up on previous webinars that were uh, recorded and conducted. Top row here gives you access to your premium library. Uh, so this is gonna make sure the user knows where to find the titles containing all the content that's most valuable for performing their tasks at hand. Uh, advanced search, which will take you over to the comprehensive content search page, uh, including the ability to take advantage of all of our advanced search capabilities. And then the My Favorites. And these two will act as anchors to jump you to blocks further down on the page. Uh, so the next piece we're gonna to move to here is my favorites, which just so happens to be the next block in sequence. But we can see by clicking on that, we'll jump the user directly down to it. Now with the my favorites, this allows the user to build a set of the titles that they visit most frequently. Um, so that with a single click, you're able to return on subsequent visits and pick up where you left off. As a new user, you'll notice the my favorites block here is gonna be empty, uh, but we can click on manage favorites and we can add any titles to our favorites block as we go along. So I can type in any portion of the title here. I can click 21 IBC, say I want to add the IRC, and we'll put the IFC in there as well. So these become titles that I've identified that I'm going to be frequenting uh, as I sign into digital codes. And even as I add these, the default you can see is going to list these alphabetically, but I can override that simply by dragging and dropping if I know residential is gonna be the primary one that I wanna to go to. Uh, once I'm on the Manage Favorites, I can always return to the My Library page by clicking on Menu, and uh, the My Library appears here directly under the Home. So we'll see here if I go back to the My Library page. Now My Favorites block has been populated. It is reflecting the sort order that I just set with residential first. And for these, by clicking on uh, any of these covers, it takes me immediately into the title landing page where I can leverage the table of contents to jump into specific chapters or sections and complete the task at hand. Right. Um, as my library uh, continues to expand and my favorites list gets longer, we did introduce um, a grid view by default, but we also have a list view presentation. So this gives the user a little more control as to how they want to traverse their contents and be able to return to them very, very efficiently. All right, and then the next block scrolling down is the titles region. And so this becomes a consolidated opportunity to traverse everything available on digital codes. Now, as a trial user, uh, the default here is going to be reflectant of everything inside my active premium subscription. So the tabs along the top here is gonna default to all, and then my scope 
will default to across my premium titles. Now we're going to step through each option to review what those mean, but the default here for a premium user being all across my premium titles is going to give me an immediate opportunity to see exactly how many titles across the platform are available to me with premium features activated. And those are going to include everything from uh, the enhanced navigation components, um, cross-linking, ability to add annotations and bookmarks, as well as perform advanced searches across them. Uh, as we look at some of these other options, um, all would give everything. Recommended is going to serve up titles that are relevant based on my location, as well as my tendencies. So based on my persona, uh, what types of titles I'm looking at, uh, what state I'm pulling up, um, these titles are going to be recommendations from the system uh, that it feels are going to be beneficial to my use case. The recently viewed will take into account any titles that I have uh, visited since my previous sessions. Um, if you think of streaming platforms, be it Netflix or Disney Plus, this would be the equivalent of continue where you left off. Um, so this, much like favorites, is going to give you uh, recently accessed titles. The difference is this is going to be listed regardless of whether that title is flagged as a favorite or not. Um, so when you compare and contrast these two blocks, you have more control to say what you want in your favorites list, whereas recently viewed is going to be those titles that you opened up and viewed content in your last session. And then this last one here allows you, especially for premium complete users, to stay on top of the great content that ICC continues to add that is available inside your subscription. Now, you might be noticing a couple of these covers are missing. Again, it's because this demo is being led from our stage environment. Uh, rest assured that when these contents are loaded in the production environment, all of those uh, physical assets for the covers will be present. Now, when we come back to all, so we've got the tabs along the top here, and then our scope dropdown will control what, uh, how far the bounds are returning for the search results. So if I wanted to go all and then search all titles on digital codes, you'll notice this is going to return everything that exists on the platform. So I have over 2,000 titles currently available on digital codes. And if I step inside here for my premium titles, we can see that I've got just about half of those inside my premium subscription. Now, again, this is at a premium complete trial uh, aspect. Um, so for a, a full featured trial, that number is going to be even higher than during the trial. Uh, but the user gets a much better sense of just how far reaching their access is. And then the last one here gives insight into those that are premium only titles where a subscription is required. And this is where premium really starts to differentiate itself from the basic experience and some other options out there. Um, these are going to be the supplemental materials that don't have a free component, but really strengthen or enhance the application understanding and enforcement of the codes as written. And this is going to be everything from your study companions, your commentaries, your essentials, um, and these are going to be identified in the grid view here by the P icon that appears underneath it. Now, one thing to call out as we look at these, uh, right now, everything in premium only has both the P icon and the gold border. Uh, depending on your access level, you might see titles where the P icon is there, but the gold border is not. The border identifies what is inside of your active premium subscription. So if we were to go back to the My Premium titles, everything in this view is going to have the gold border this has the premium features activated based on my tier. Premium only, the P icon is indicating that there is not a basic component to this title, but unless the gold border is there, it may not be a part of my premium subscription. And that is outlined as well in the tooltip here um, to break down uh, intuitively how to navigate these pieces. All right. As I come back here to all and then my premium titles, um, the other thing I wanted to show is our search filters, giving the user complete control and defining the titles that are relevant for their use case. So these search filters are going to reflect what a lot of customers have become familiar with from our landing page. So when we talk about browsing available contents by, we have our eight high level buckets here with our drop downs. This is pulled forward into the My Library components as well where across everything inside of premium, the user can further refine to say, show me the 2021 I codes. Maybe I want to pull from 2021 as well as a specific state location. And we can see that the descriptor here gets smart as I filter that down to let me know that it's showing 82 results from the 21 I codes in California. And I can go even further and say, show me from those result sets, 
anything that's relevant to building. And this is going to refine even further, and we can see we have a very targeted result of where to pick up uh, so that we can dive into the content and engage much more rapidly. Now, as we do that, what's really nice with the My Library is any of the search filters being applied are stored as preferences to the user. Meaning, if I drill into here, I'm navigating across the International Building Code. Um, here inside of the Premium, we can see my hyperlinked uh, behavior uh, with my PCAD functionality. We can see my Premium Tool Grid, my ability to make notes and uh, annotations. And when I return back here to my library, my filters and my results set are going to be preserved exactly as I left them. So I'm still seeing here building from the 21 I codes in California, meaning if this is the refined result set that I engage with most frequently, I don't have to uh, repeat those steps in order to perform those adjustments. And with regards to preferences, the other piece you have is the ability to expand or collapse these blocks based on what is most relevant for your use case. So assuming I've onboarded, I understand what's in the get started, I understand what's in the favorites, but that's not a feature that I'm going to utilize very heavily. I can actually leave those blocks to be collapsed, recognizing I'm going to engage with my titles most frequently. And again, whether I want to go grid or list view, that functionality exists here as well. And if I were to navigate away, let's say we'll click into another one of these titles. I return back to my library. We can see that the consolidated view is preserved and it returns the page exactly as I had left it. And this will be the case even if I sign out and sign in in a future session to digital codes, um, that preference is persisted so that I'm able to start using the application in the way that's most efficient for my use case. And then the last piece as we scroll down a little bit further is going to be our concurrent access block. This becomes a really valuable feature to take advantage of as one of the opportunities to configure your license and share uh, across your team. Uh, with concurrent access, the flexibility is such that you can buy a block of licenses, uh, let's say five premium complete licenses. You can configure those to be concurrent behind an access code, and you can then distribute that code to your team as far and wide as necessary, let's say a team of 15 or 20, the only limitation becomes there only five of that team of 20 can be in the system at the same time. But as soon as someone signs out, that license is now freed up for one of the other team members to take advantage of. And we have a sample one here, so I'm going to go ahead and enter one of my concurrent codes. And we can see how the My Library display will refine based on the type of connection that I'm now within. So what I was looking at prior was my personal account with a trial experience. Now that I'm con connected concurrently, one thing you will notice is the intro text has refined. Um, no longer am I seeing the countdown uh, for how many days are remaining, remaining on the trial uh, because I am inside the shared concurrent access token now. Uh, I still have access to the tools and content, but as we scroll down, my favorites and the titles are going to be refined as it relates to the concurrent code. And the biggest piece here is what we're seeing in, inside of the titles is going to be a different set because these are the titles with the premium features and content provisioned under the concurrent code that I've entered. Um, that becomes even more intuitive as we hover over the account menu here on the right hand side and the users get a chance to start to see how our account navigation and the different profiles allows for configuration of different groups, different collaboration opportunities. So where we sign in, your username and password is your account. That will not change as you authenticate to digital codes. But this listing here, which will expand dynamically, allows the user to traverse one of three different types of profiles. Uh, and as we just mentioned, the profile will control the content and the features that are provisioned for that active premium subscription. The personal here lets me know that that is the premium trial, which I just navigated out of. And demo test two is the code for a concurrent profile type in which I am currently active. Any of the preferences that I apply here. So again, if I want to refine this further and say, just show me the 2021 I codes, we'll notice that search is refined. I can change this to the list view as well. I can expand favorites, but I'll leave get started expanded. And what I wanted to show is if I navigate back to my personal account, which I can do with a single click, 
the preferences of how I utilize my premium complete trial are differentiated from how I'm going to utilize the concurrent functionality. Uh, so I can actually jump in and out of profiles here with a single click. And again, my demo test two is preserved so that I don't have to type the code again the next time, uh, but it lets me know that I'm not actively connected to that uh, account profile. The profile types, uh, personal and concurrent, we just reviewed. There is one additional type of profile uh, which expands upon here, and that is our DCP Enterprise offering. Um, so sticking with Peter Quill here, what I'm going to do is navigate over to my other browser. And on the back end, um, an enterprise profile uses dedicated seats, but is another means by which the user can leverage uh, collaboration possibilities. And I am going to go ahead and add my Peter Quill account um, to an existing profile. So as I add Peter, he has now been activated inside of Enterprise. And if I come back here and I'm going to refresh this page, traversing the application as Peter, what I'm going to do is receive a pop-up letting me know that I've been invited into an Enterprise account. So where concurrent access allows you to share the licenses, but the limitation is how many users can be in the system at the same time, DCP Enterprise allows you to buy a block of dedicated seats. And the administrator has the ability to define who is provisioned for each of those seats, but you're not going to run into sharing obstacles like you would with concurrent. Um, each of those individuals has a seat set aside for them, but the collaboration opportunities, the premium features, and the titles and contents that are provisioned function in much the same way. When I accept this invite, it's going to initiate the third type of profile uh, for this individual. And you can see here where the Get Started block really provides the context as to what the user is seeing and how they're going to utilize it. In this scenario, the user is now within an enterprise subscription, and it lets me know as well that this is premium complete within the enterprise. We do have the branded logo to differentiate enterprise from our traditional digital codes premium licenses. And as we navigate over here to the menu, now we have the third option in the dropdown. So I've got my personal. In this scenario, I have an enterprise I can navigate to and I've got my concurrent um, opportunity. What's important is that any notes created and any collaboration is going to be contained within the scope of that profile. What's really powerful is that this user could be invited to multiple enterprise profiles, meaning they can be collaborating across multiple companies, multiple groups, or even multiple teams based on what the relevance of the use case is. As we scroll down, we're still going to have the favorites and then the titles block. Uh, but this is going to be relevant to what's provisioned for that account. So you'll recall as a premium trial, I had roughly 900 titles. You'll notice this with premium complete as a full provisioned account has over 1,500. And again, that account is going to quickly and easily show the user what they have access to, while also having the ability to quickly navigate down to uh, what's going to be most useful or most relevant for their use case. So again, all that functionality is going to exist exactly the same way. If we were to come back over here, we can add Peter to one more enterprise here. Uh, we set up that one was for complete. We're going to add one here for a premium single, just so that we can show how that would look as he has more than one enterprise account added to his dropdown. Right, so he's going to be added again. If we refresh, he's going to receive another invite here within the system. And while this does appear inside of the Digital Codes application to make sure the user is aware uh, that they're being invited, um, I will call out that that was one other change that we implemented here. The user will receive an email as well. So if they're not actively within the system at the time, uh, they'll receive an email alerting them of the fact they've been invited to an enterprise account and have an ability to accept that. That may have something to do with the fact that it's a stage environment. So I can uh, share a screenshot of what that would look like after the demo. Uh, but the idea is the same. They would accept the invite from the email. It would bring the user into my library. And again, it would activate that enterprise profile with the appropriate titles uh, provisioned. Now this one, again, if we scroll down to my library, 
You'll notice because this one was a premium single, this only has the building code provisioned within it. So it lets me know that all across my premium titles in this account is actually only three. And again, as we come over here to the account menu, now you can see where the power of this really starts to build. I have my FS complete, my FS single. That will be reflective of the enterprise name uh, that the organization lands upon when they secure the contract. Um, and then my concurrent. And again, a single click allows me to take full advantage of any of these access levels um, and content features. All right, so I will pause there just briefly. Any questions to this point? Hey, Dan, you, I mean, it's, uh, you, you were showing the enterprise seats compared to the um, DCP licenses, um, which was a good point. Uh, while you're there on your screen, could you show where the new configure license uh, access is? For people who have purchased the DCP licenses, they are able to configure them, as Dan mentioned, into um, being into shared groups. And as the owner of the license, um, you're able to configure those. So over on the left-hand side, Dan, it's moved to on the menu and premium tools. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as we've just talked about a second ago, this is now the account menu. So this is dedicated to being able to traverse your re reflective profiles. Within any individual profile that's active, your premium tool set, including the configure licenses that Phil was just talking about, are going to be accessible from the main menu under your premium tools heading. And so when we click on license configuration, this is the page that uh, Phil had just mentioned, uh, where for any subscriptions that are provisioned for that account, meaning that user is the one who completed the transaction and has control over them, they would list out here and allow the user to configure them to either be assigned to another individual or configure them to be concurrent. Uh, thanks, and you also had um, shown the search um, features uh, for if you could go back to them maybe and since uh, you're driving this uh, demo already and show a couple things um, how to access search if someone wants to search uh, usually when I do these demos I'll point out that if they're on the home page they can search in that search bar across all their 1400 titles if they have complete but there's a couple other options you can do and um, especially maybe show that where you find the advanced search with the um, search terms and near term search sure absolutely um, so as you do open up one of the titles across digital codes and you're looking inside the contents, the system is contextually aware. So you'll notice along the top here, the default text is letting you know any search you perform now would be across the 2021 International Building Code by default. So if I were to look in here for means of egress as an example, the dropdown is going to suggest relevant terms, matching means of egress or enhancing it further. So I can either select one of these or I can hit enter just to initiate the search based on what I had typed. The user will be directed to our search results page, but what's important to note here is the result set is going to be smaller because this is bound to the singular title. So I have the ability at any point that I can remove this title, which will increase the scope. Uh, but the intent is to give me a more targeted result set based on what the system is identifying is relevant to the content that I am actively uh, perusing. So all of these results here, and this is going to be confirmed by the breadcrumbs that appear underneath, are going to be sourced from the 2021 International Building Code. Now, as I come in, I can clear these, or I can hit uh, Clear Search up here, which is going to remove all the filters. This would be the same as navigating from anywhere across the site, uh, clicking on Advanced Search, or typing in the search directly in here, if I am not inside of an individual title, you'll notice for that same means of egress, I'm going to get a much, much larger result set because this is returning matches from every title inside my premium subscription, which as a premium complete trial user is going to be upwards of a thousand different titles. Um, so we can see some of the strongest matches here by relevance are international existing building code. Uh, we do have some matches here from the building code. Uh, but that's the key difference, is that's going to be a far wider result set, which really allows me to take advantage of some of the advanced term searching, where I can refine this down. I have means of egress. Let's say I want means of egress, but I don't want any sections that have the word accessible within it. I can actually apply that to the result here, which is going to shrink this down. Um, I can also refine, based on the categories, the years, and the titles here, 
much the same way that it did automatically when I was coming from the 2018, uh, excuse me, 2021 International Building Code. So I can actually come in here and say, uh, I only want to see results across the I codes, and I only want to see results from, say, the 2018 I codes. Every refinement I apply is going to reduce the size of my result set. And again, my breadcrumbs are going to let me know which individual title any of these results are sourced from. Uh, the specific match is going to be highlighted here in yellow. And then I've got my premium tools available here on the right hand side so that for these results, I can jump to the section, either clicking on this icon or uh, the title of the section itself, which is going to open up the chapter view and take me to that section. So whether there's relevance from the preceding or following uh, subsections, I can read that in full. Um, I can copy this to my clipboard. So if I'm using this functionality in coordination with another tool, um, I can actually grab the text of this section and have it prepared to drop in somewhere else. Uh, I can generate a PDF of this section, which is going to be copyrighted for my individual use, uh, but this way I have this available that I can utilize anywhere else that is necessary. I can share the link to this section. So whether I'm fielding a call with a constituent or a colleague, I can quickly and easily send them directly to the specific passage where the requirements are clearly spelled out. And then last but not least, I can add a bookmark right from here. So if I want to start classifying a multitude of these, I can actually define a tag for means of egress. Uh, I can select the appropriate color to keep myself organized. And I can go right down the line and actually start flagging multiple results here with my means of egress value. And it becomes an efficient way not only to keep uh, results across multiple titles organized, but if I come and I take advantage of another premium tool, which is my notes and bookmarks page, I can actually generate a PDF title of all of my notes of a specific value and export that to a PDF. So if I want to say, show me everything from means of egress, which right now is the two sections I just bookmarked, I can select those, I just title this my PDF. But we notice here when I click on PDF, now I've got the passages from those two titles in a singular PDF that I can distribute uh, to my colleagues or to my constituents as necessary. Also on those notes and bookmarks there, um, especially uh, now that we're going to the new cycle with the 2024 I codes, any of those notes that you see there are now have the ability you can migrate those into future future books. So instead of uh, pulling out old sticky notes or recopying, you can move the notes into the new versions and the system's intelligent enough to know that if uh, the code section number has changed slightly or the chapter, it attaches it to the correct code section. Much more efficient than recreating them all from scratch. Absolutely. And then let me throw a question at you here and see how you would find it as this user might be looking for it. But um, if someone wants to see differences between the IBC 215 to 218, what are some ways that they would be able to notice that, whether it be well, I'll let you go ahead, Dan, in the order you think. Sure. Um, so the best way to do that is going to be utilizing the color-coded text across the contents. Um, that is indicated uh, to mark up the technical changes between the cycles of the I-code. So anywhere that you do see blue text is going to indicate uh, a technical change from the prior cycle, uh, which in this case would be the 2015 International Building Code. Now, as a premium user, we have the ability to take advantage of the additional premium materials that are tagged across. Um, so in this scenario, there would be a revision history tagged here. And again, stage environment, yeah, so we don't have the real content. But in production, uh, we would actually have the legislative format complete with the cost impact reason statement and any of the code development outcomes that pertain to the changes to the specific section. So that's a really powerful feature there. Um, the color-coded text does correspond to the marginal markings in the printed book. So if that's a format that the audience is more familiar with, um, the color-coded text actually allows for the digital representation to get more granular. Uh, whereas in a physical book, the marginal marking would indicate a change somewhere in that line. As we continue to iterate and move forward, the digital can get down to a specific term or terms that changed, um, indicating much more granular as well as uh, allowing the application to tag that supplemental material so that everything from the revision history to the hearing videos uh, will be available for the viewer to take advantage of. 
All right, and everyone, please uh, continue to um, post questions in the chat. Um, I'll either answer them directly or um, ask Dan to uh, to show some items. Um, hey, Dan, how about um, if you go through, uh, you're logged in to complete? Uh, as a trial user, I am, correct. Okay. Uh, do you have the regular complete access or no? Uh, this would be trial. So if we want to go okay. to a full paid, I can certainly pivot to that. No problem. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to, uh, if you could uh, give a quick overview of the types of titles you don't have to dive into you know all the individual ones but a lot of times i'll get questions on you know people may just need a a couple of specific titles or maybe a collection but i always like to tell them if you start adding you know single titles multiple single titles or multiple collections um, you're getting up to what the complete would cost and you know then everyone always wants to know well what's really incomplete i know we got 1400 1500 titles in there but maybe you give a quick overview of the the popular ones you've you've seen too Absolutely. Um, and one of the biggest differences we see here, the trial experience is around 900. The biggest differentiation there is the ASTM reference standards um, that are not a part of the trial, but are a part of the paid experience, uh, which are north of 500 titles right there alone. Um, so that's what's going to move this from under 1,000 to over the 1,400 that Phil had alluded to earlier. Uh, if I sign out here, and I did forewarn that I had multiple Marvel characters queued up, uh, the next one here that I actually have for a full premium complete, so we can see that difference, is the man himself, Mr. Stan Lee. And so when he signs in, uh, we're again going to be taken to, close some of these other tabs, uh, we're going to be taken to the My Library page. Big difference here is we're going to be notified this is an ICC Digital Codes Premium with a complete subscription. Again, you'll notice the absence of the trial countdown because this is a full uh, subscription. And when we scroll down here to the titles region, here you can see north of 1,500 titles. So within here, the user can take advantage with drilling down across any of the standards, any of uh, the resource titles, um, even any of the commentaries. And they'll be able to see how all of those are provisioned and accessible to the user. Now, prior to making that premium complete selection, what Phil was alluding to, to be able to see what complete contains and the difference in the value, is if we come over here to collections, we have the premium complete landing page, and this is going to spell out every title included within Digital Codes Premium Complete. And again, it gives us the count here along the top. And what's nice here is if there are specific titles you're interested in, you can refine from here, and you'll notice in real time it's going to let you know any titles that match um, that portion of the title. So if we're looking for standards, if we're looking for ASTM, for example, uh, if we want to see commentaries, commentary, uh, we have the ability to, to see what all is included. So we can make an informed decision as to the value of premium complete, which again, for a uh, non-member, $960 for a year, really boils down to less than a dollar per year per title with how much value is included across it. Um, and as we scroll down too, there are some titles that are only available to premium complete. And so you get an opportunity to see what those are as well. Um, and it really does drive the value of this offering as opposed to premium singles, uh, which allows you to select just the individual titles that you're interested in or the other collection offerings, uh, which are gonna be similar to complete. It's a bundled set of titles uh, for a common, uh, common topic or common application. Hey Dan, can you pull up a California title? Um, there's a question because uh, we had mentioned about the the blue text. Um, yes, we do have different colored text in there. And as Dan's looking through this, I'll kind of give you an explanation. The uh, once again to uh, to explain the blue text, for example, in a 2021 IBC would be a change of a section from the previous cycle of the IBC. So that's the way you can easily visually see that information. And I guess if you want to pull up the legend over there too, Dan, it kind of explains that we also yeah. have. Um, in the red type, that's why I asked them to do a, um, well, actually kind of cool right there. You do see some of the blue text coming through. So even though this is the CBC, it still, still indicates changes in the regular I code title of IBC. It, it does because it further layers on the base I code. So yep. any technical changes in the I codes are preserved. And again, I'm looking for an example of the red text to illustrate Phil's example here. Uh, I do the same thing. Some of the, there's one, but yeah, the red text will then indicate 
a change of, of a California specific amendment and then to go even further as he opens up the legend there's some cities like city of LA we have in there that you know goes down to fuchsia so all the all the items you may see on here are in the legend there and then Dan we had a question about the P I don't know if you want to go to find a title but the question was there is not going to be a premium icon next to every code section because not every code section has either like the revision history significant changes or code hearings so those logos that you saw and um, probably at the top of some of the code sections are only going to be available in code sections where there's that extra content available if there wasn't any errata or there wasn't any es reports for that code section you won't see those icons those icons oh there you go you had four of them all the way at the top there that chapter had yeah. all of them well, this is letting us know within this chapter, there is at least one instance of each type. But again, as you scroll down, you're going to see as it relates to that specific section, you know, some are going to have uh, CDP tags, which is going to indicate in real time from the cycle, a proposal under consideration, meaning this proposal may or may not be approved, but it allows the user awareness um, so they can either prepare for this potential change or even get involved in the hearings to throw their support or opposition behind this change. And then the P tags themselves would indicate whether it be revision history or hearing videos, uh, some of the additional content that is going to be available to enhance the understanding for that section. And as mentioned, those will only be shown if there is extra content available in those code sections. Correct. Hey Dan, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you do a search for a title? I did have a request for someone asking for a specific title. Um, okay. If you go, yeah, go to the home page, you open it up uh, and you want to show the difference between a content search and a title search. But how about BICSI? Um, I know I'm uh, just throwing that out there, but that was a specific request. But I know a lot of people do search for specific standards that we may or may not have in there. As mentioned, we keep continuing to add on. So there's some F standard uh, development organizations that prefer to license the, their content on their own. But yeah, go ahead and explain how you would search for a title and it could tell whether it's not in their subscription. Sure. Um, so what I would suggest is one of two routes there. Uh, the first and most obvious is to go ahead and type in the title in the search bar here. Um, this one, for example, is letting us know it didn't return any relevant titles. Um, so before reaching out to Phil or myself to express an interest in this title to see if that's something ICC can obtain access to digitize and add, what I would suggest is come here to the standards dropdown and see if it's a naming convention, because there might be something slightly different with how that standard is titled. But if you know who the standards development organization that publishes that standard is, um, there's a good possibility that that organization has a category page already present. And clicking on any one of these would allow you to see the full array from that publisher of what Digital Codes has included already. Yeah, now we have a flurry of questions for specific titles. What I will do is um, I will also post a link in here right now. Uh, there is a website, uh, a, a web page where you can view all the different complete titles and search form. I will also mention that as we've gotten more requests for different types of content, um, we've gone the route of adding extra add-on licenses for an additional fee just because of the way licensing is done with some organizations so it's not com included in complete but you could still um buy that title and have it on the same type of platform but it would be separate so i'll drop a link in there um just to show the the search functionality that complete or the titles in there sorry okay and then also these requests here, Dan, show them where the feedback form is too. So, like I said, we do pay attention if we get lots of requests for specific titles. We yeah, reiterating that right from the start of the call. But yeah, drop that in, your name, your email, a uh, description of what title you'd like to see on there. Um, those do go directly into the team and they are monitoring these actively. All right, I do appreciate everyone that's posted questions. Um, we will keep this short if there's no further questions, but feel free to post them for a little bit here. I just put that link in the chat where you could um, search for titles that are incomplete. And if you clicked on that link there, there is a counter of titles in there that is dynamic where whenever we do add those uh, new titles in there, that'll keep increasing. And then the bottom right hand, 
uh, search table, I guess, so to speak, there is a um, list of additional add-on titles that you could put within your subscription as well, Tim. The last thing I briefly wanted to show uh, is what we call our quick access feature. As a premium user, this gives you another expedient route to access just the contents that are gonna be most applicable. Uh, so much like what the title search uh, functions at the top, you'd be able to type in any portion of a title to select it, and then it would be the section number. So imagine you're working off a checklist or another tool where you know the requirement is in 504.2. You can actually pull up just that section right from here Similar to the search results page, I have the premium features available, and I can jump to this section in the scope of the full chapter, but if I am jumping across multiple titles, multiple sections, again, from a checklist uh, mentality, just by using this dropdown, I can actually see, okay, chat, that was 504. Um, let's say I wanna move to 612, and it's gonna let me know based on what's relevant inside of that title. Apparently 612 was a bad choice. Let's see, 602. There we go. Um, and it allows me quickly to see just the content that's most relevant. Uh, assuming I had created notes, that would get pulled in here as well. So my note is always associated with the relevant content. And if I initiate a return visit to this page by refreshing, we can see that those sections that I've pulled up are gonna be listed out here under the recently accessed sections. And without even having to type anything in, I can recall those sections that I had pulled up previously. So if these are common passages that I'm referring back to, this becomes a really efficient means to traverse across them. Dan, I'm gonna throw you two more questions so you can allocate whatever time you want for them. Um, sure. The, uh, can you mention, can you, first of all, uh, any updates on digital codes being able, when that's gonna be used in the Pronto exam system? And then the other thing is there's questions about Revit. So if you can do a quick overview of that, for those of you that are going to the AIA meeting in San Francisco in a few weeks, we will be there as well. So those two questions were just posted. We will indeed, okay, great. Uh, with the DC for exams, we do have that live across six pilot exams currently. Uh, we are actively collecting feedback from those early adopters, um, and we will be planning to expand that across a much wider array of Pronto exams here in the coming weeks. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, that feature is continuing to grow and expand, uh, and we're very excited about the potential for it. Uh, with regards to Revit, uh, that download is readily available from the landing page here of Digital Codes. Um, that is going to be a bundled value for any of your active premium subscriptions, meaning there's no additional cost to take advantage of this utility. Um, you would uh, download the plugin, um, install it from your in, uh, local Revit installation app, um, and it would allow you to access the contents on digital codes right in the scope of the Revit utility itself. Um, now, that being the first component, uh, we do have an exciting roadmap of where we're going with that as we continue to introduce more features around it. Um, but if there are ideas or specific asks, again, please utilize the feedback tab. Let us know what you'd like to see in the Revit tool, what would be the most valuable. Okay, questions are slowing down. I will stay on till the top of the hour, but Dan, you want to conclude with anything? I'll stop the recording after that, or should I stop recording now? Uh, I was going to say you can stop the recording now, uh, but again, just reiterating, we, we do welcome feedback. We welcome th thoughts and opinions, especially with these new designs on my library. Uh, we're very excited to hear from the customers um, how this is going to help them become more efficient in their daily traversals. Definitely appreciate your time and everyone attending. Please stay on the line. We'll answer some questions here, but I will end the recording now. Thank you, everyone.